Yo, good morning everybody. How's it going today? So Luna decided to come say good morning to everybody. You want to say hi to the camera, Luna? So she's very excited about Dogecoin. And she's also a really big fan of BitConnect. She's hoping that BitConnect 2.0, it really does launch. She wants to be the face of it. And she also loves Seal Coins as well. Okay, so Luna, how do you feel about the bull market? Do you want to answer to your followers that love and adore you that... Like, what do you think of the market right now, huh? Oh. Oh, okay, guys, she's got no comment. All right, so she's going to join me, and we're going to do a TA. You know, just ah! to... Whoa, what was that? Ah. Why'd you bite me? You're a little bit vicious this morning. Is everything okay? She's been really snappy lately. I don't know why. She actually bit me, like, a few times. She's never bit me in her seven years that I've had her. And I can, like, touch her anywhere, and I... I I raised her really well, and she's really well behaved. But lately, she's been really snippy with like not just me, but even with my folks when they visit. And um, yeah, I'm not really sure why. Maybe something's wrong with her. I gotta take her to the vet. Maybe she hurts somewhere. All right, you ready to sleep there, Luna? We're gonna get into some TA. Sorry to take up your time there, but show me my little puppy. Okay, so a lot has happened right now. And uh, we're gonna talk about Bitcoin in this video first, of course, because that should be the topic on everybody's mind. Okay, Luna, you're getting a little bit uncomfortable. Do you guys see her trying to adjust on my lap right here? You want to go on the ground? Yeah, I'll put you on the ground. Come on. There you go. Go. Okay, so let's get into this right away. You know, the first thing we got to talk about is how, even though it's a bull market, a lot of people are actually losing money. People are trying to short this thing hard. Or people are just getting liquidated because of long wicks. Like here, guaranteed people got got liquidated. An 8% drop is enough to liquidate if you're playing like times... 8. Like if you're playing like times like 5. I think that's enough. Yeah, that's like more than enough. Flashes like that can happen, but and usually people play way more. Like they're playing like times ten, and if the market shakes like five percent, they're done. So these wicks happen because of cascading waterfalls of stop losses that are getting triggered. And right now we gotta first of all identify what's going on on the big picture. Okay, actually let's go to the monthly. So right now in the monthly we're incredibly bullish. We're pushing to the top side here. Everything's looking just really, really bullish and parabolic going up. That we're going to acknowledge. We're getting the RSI here at 87 on the weekly. And it hasn't been like this high since the 2017 bull market. And then we go down to the four-day chart. We see that the RSI and the MACD are increasing very heavily right now. RSI is steadily ticking to the upside. On the three day, we get the same consistent movement to the upside of the upticking histogram peaks. And then we also see the RSI increasing as well with very strong price action increasing to the upside on the three day. On the two day, what we witness right here is a massive increase in volume for the past two, a day, and a day and three quarters with four hours left to close on this two day. We're seeing a massive surge in volume and that we haven't seen this type since November the 30th. So it has been about two weeks now. So today we also see that the MACD on the two day has officially ticked over. It had three negative down ticks on this side and then we tick up. But we don't know if it'll be a fake out, Okay, which we're going to talk about all the possible risks associated with this very soon. And then we take a look at the daily, which is a very important measure of an overall gauge of everything going on. I think I think the daily is such a strong measure right now, okay? And we're going to go over why as well, okay? Um, why it's a strong measure. Actually, I'll give you an example right now, okay? Just as an example, on we're going to go way back, okay? On December the 17th of uh, the bull market. This is the this, this is really important because it started to that you would have thought it was the top almost. Here you probably would have top thought double top. And because it didn't, 
breakdown that went up, the next bearish candle would have more strongly implied that a downtrend was imminent, which proved it true. Right? So that's that last year. Or 2017, rather. Here's 2018. 2018, December the 17th. Massive bull candle. The day before that was a doji. So the signals are clear. Double doji. Bam. Bullish. Enter. 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 You know what I'm saying? So it's two years we proved it. That's significant. 2019. And then 2019, not really that, well, I guess it was not that significant, right? But the next day, sure did signal it. So it may not be exactly today, but it should signal something for the next day or today, right? So that one's half, half possible to count as a case. Today, we're very bullish. Moving down, I got a really important point. There's a reason why I'm pointing out all of these bullish factors, okay? And if you're really unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, even just relating it to RSI or MACD or price action, like really consider taking my course, guys. I've only got a few slots left for December. I know that before 240 was kind of high. So for December, I'm doing it for 150 American by crypto only. Only a few slots left. Just get in it. It might be really worth your while. And a lot of people have said good things about it. And people have especially said like, yeah, I just made one trade and I made it back because of that or whatever. You know, like there are some bad things said about it. Like I'm not that available, which is kind of true on Udemy. But try contacting me on Twitter or Messenger. You're going to get a response most likely very soon. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I don't really show my course or anything. You guys know that for a fact. It's like I talk about it once in a blue moon. And it's really brief and there's no like crazy advertisement, you know, like with banners and shit on my page like that. I just it sells itself because I think it's a really good course and um, the surprise is still coming. So hang tight. I don't want to like make an announcement for an announcement, you know, shit like that. I just want to be real and just talk the talk and walk the walk, especially. So there is a surprise coming soon for the people in for Udemy and premium, actually. So yeah the premium is not really good for people who like haven't really taken the course in my opinion because it might be overwhelming with the material that i'm talking about because i i assume you guys know everything right and you've taken the courses one two and three so sometimes it just dive into it it's like gets really detailed sometimes even complicated right where i lose myself and then you guys are correcting me on youtube and i'm like oh great i'm glad that you guys are following too and um yeah, but it's really good for people like the premium group, especially for people who have taken the course. You get the most out of it, especially um if there was an updated course. Wink, wink. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys will see. So back to BTC. Okay, twelve hour still trending very very high here. Okay, but what we want to do here first is we want to go back to the daily and compare it to any relevant peaks. We're like, you know what, it is getting a lower high. We don't know where this one levels off yet. So the two-day tells us nothing yet. The daily tells us nothing. The 12-hour, though, is the RSI is curving over. And the MACD is still exponential. We have to remember that it, we're in a very parabolic, exponential move to the upside right now. Okay, that's crucial to remember. Okay, and then I'm going to demonstrate soon why... That's something we needed to acknowledge and the process that I'm going through from the high time frame to the low time frame. So think of what I've done in this 10 minute T8 so far, other than talk about my dog, <laughs> you know, and, and my course a little bit, I guess. Sorry about that. Um, I, I talked about from the high time frame of how basically bullish it is, right? And how parabolic it is. We're acknowledging, oh, it's so bullish on the weekly. Ah, it's bullish on the four day. Ah, it's bullish on the T day, the 12 hour. Where is it not bullish? Well, we said the 12 hour, right? And then we say it as well, the eight hour, a little bit. So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a curve that like that could show us that it's slowing down. So now I get to the punchline. Now, there are, there are many different types of rallies, which we've all seen. There are ones that that go like this. So I'm just doing that quickly so I can just get the wave in there and then delete it again. <laughs> There are ones that go like that, like a diagonal, you know, like it's really slow or whatever. 
You know what I mean? It's really slow, and it, but it does have a, like kind of a dramatic drop, which I like about that. You know that it breaks to the downside. For example, like that's one type of rally. You guys all know that. There's the slow ass ones, where this one makes a channel, and then this one comes down. This one kind of goes up a little bit, and then this one here makes a channel. And I'm talking about a channel like this, okay? Where like this shit in here, you know, it literally makes a channel. It's really slow. This one, this one too. This one makes an even longer one, just as an example. You guys have all seen that. Right? Like something like that in there. And then this goes like, you know, one, two, and this goes like three, four, whatever, like five. And then this one here is slow. Right? I'm just giving like whatever example, you know? Here, for example. And overall, it just, it's still, it's still a really slow uptrend, right? It's not steep. See what I mean? Got that? And then there are the ones like this. Shallow. Okay, this one's shallow. Third wave goes up even more. Actually, let's, let's not be that, like that. This one here has a shallow retracement. But this third wave is deep. And then it's even more shallow. And then this one gets even fucking bigger. And then it's even more steep. You guys all know this one, right? Where if you draw the bottom, if you if you just make like lines and connect the the, the pivots, you see it's exponential. Do you see what I mean? It's it's an exponential function going to the upside. I call it a hyperbolic move or a parabolic move, right? These ones here are the scariest ones. The other ones, they're fairly predictable because the momentum is very slow paced. So you can see the change in the RSI, the MACD, right? It's slowly building up. It's not volatile is what I'm saying. It can be volatile over a large period of time. But because it's not parabolic where it's just spiking up with that curve going up, it's, it's not nearly, it's, it's a lot more stable in terms of, you know, more predictable in my opinion. These ones here, what I you know about them is that they're very unpredictable with how high they can go because this guy here the fifth wave is the one that's like whoa it's it's basically like if you if you've heard of the, the Dow theory for example right it's like if first of all there there's the accumulation phase and then there's the I don't know a lot about it it's just general reading like uh, you know a bunch of passages here and there and some articles and some books etc right just a small amount so the first phase is the accumulation phase, right? Where people slowly snip. They're going to snip without like causing a panic in the market, without people seeing, without making a dent. You don't want the, it to get suspicious, right? That's usually the first wave. That's why a lot of people usually miss the first wave. A lot of people do, right? And then they're still buying, like, you know, then, and then they're buying on the dip as well. And then the public participation phase starts, the second one. That's where people actually start to notice it. Like, you and I, maybe, will get into it because we're starting to see the first wave, big rally, like, okay, dip. And that's why third waves tend to be really strong, right? Because people start to get in on it. And the access phases can usually start, like, on the fifth wave, going to the upside. So that right there, the, it's called the access phase, the third phase. And that shit anywhere, anything can go down, including fifth wave extensions, right? Where it's just, it's so unpredictable. That's what I do know about it. Another thing that I do know about it is this. I know that because it's so unpredictable, what usually happens with these is there's a large sell-off, right? And because there's a large sell-off, you just think of, of, of Isaac Newton, okay? All right, I pulled it up. So, Newton says that any object at rest will remain at rest it's unless some, you know, unbalanced external force acts on it. That's irrelevant, okay? The most interesting one is the third one. The third law states that for every action force in nature, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In other words, if object A exerts a force on object B, then B also exerts 
uh, B also exerts an equal force on object A. And, and in my opinion, you know, it's it's kind of it's so unrelated and dumb that I'm even bringing this up. I'm kind of embarrassed. But the way that I take this is like, for every crazy parabolic move up, there's gonna be an equal and opposite reaction, right? And and there's gonna be some like for an unbalanced external force that's really gonna start driving it to the opposite side. So like this is eventually bound to happen for all parabolic moves. We have seen it every single place that you can possibly imagine. Um, and let me give you some demonstrations. First of all, we'll start off with the king, Bitcoin, and we'll simply start off with the 2017 bull market example of really, really crazy parabolic moves to the upside where just sell-offs happen. There's a big green candle with a sell-off of 27%. Massive rallies, massive sell-offs. And then we'll even go to recent, right? We'll go to like Ave, for example, right? Big rallies, big sell-offs. Wi-Fi, right? When it started to even come up over here at the beginning, massive. Ada at the beginning over here near March, how it goes up. And then we have just huge sell-offs overall. I see that for every single coin. Vet, vet especially too, right? Big rallies sell-offs in massive amounts that just destroy accounts so right now in my opinion it's very important to understand and i was listing from every time frame that bitcoin is very bullish just so i can strongly imply that because it is and because of how parabolic it's going to the upside it's uh, excuse my voice guys i have a really sore throat if you can't tell i'm a little bit under the weather here it's nothing bad though. I don't go out anywhere, so I can't catch anything. Do you guys know what I mean? And um, yeah, so um, right now is the time to really exercise caution. Yes, we do want to capitalize on it, but we have to find that delicate balance between between caution, um, you know, for your risk that you want to allow yourself to have with possible profit. Right? We have to understand that in these types, and I've and you. This who am I to give advice? I got it's been in crypto since twenty middle of twenty before twenty six, like yeah, pretty much early twenty sixteen. It's about five years. Not only that, I trade for a living and I've been doing it fairly successfully. I would say I'm just chuckling because it's I'm laughing about, but you know, thinking back about how long ago it's been and how I used to be, you know strive to be a mechanical engineer shit it's kind of funny actually and um yeah it's very scary these markets where you're now in unforeseen territories and and it's really exciting and all but also have to take a really deep breath and realize that because we're in uncharted territory this journey that we're now venturing through is perilous and there's traps at every single turn we don't know when that guy to your left or your, your right ha with, with you know what I'm saying like whoever right is trading it ha the guy that has like a few fifties of millions of dollars of Bitcoin when he wants to move the market you and I we're just innocent bystanders that's trying to walk in the footsteps of those that actually have the capital to make a dent in this market you and i i'm sorry to say but we don't have 100 million dollars i'm sorry for assuming that you don't i don't mean to judge you <laughs> but we don't have 100 million dollars most of us right and um well most of us actually do so sorry that some of you don't have a few hundred millions lying around there in bitcoin that was uh, my attempt at a sarcastic tone. I hope that that gave it away. So it's like um, I, I really lost my train of thought. I think I'm just kind of rambling now. So what I'm just trying to get to is that like I've been in a lot of these bull markets, man. I am not kidding. I've been in so many of them since 2016 when you guys were still babies, when I was mining with like six gpus for ethereum when it was under a fucking dollar and i'm excited when it goes to dollar fifty it's like shit could you imagine that excitement 
Can you imagine that excitement when you're mining, right? And you're like Ethereum, you're getting like a ball. You know, just as an example, right? When it's like a dollar, you're getting one every few days. Or more, actually. You're getting like, I think I was getting like three a day or something like that at that time with like one video card. So I started like getting six video cards and I'm like, that's a lot of Ethereum. And it goes to $1.50, man. And then I sold it. And I was excited. Shit. That was an exciting time. And here we are again, right? We're, we're right at that pinnacle. We're right at that momentous occasion of that December 17th day. Exactly three years ago, today, right? We are at the all-time high yet again. December 17th, 2017, three years ago, was the all-time high where so many millionaires were made. And... Here we are again three years later, and congratulations to everybody, every single person that is still here today. You should be proud of yourself. And be proud of yourself if you're in the game. And you know, I may come off as a dick when I make my stupid jokes about people missing out on the market, but the truth is, like, I'm glad that you guys are here, okay? I don't really translate well by text, but I translate well by speech come off as a little bit more genuine when I talk. Just don't look at me because you're not that pretty, Philcon. <laughs> I think I'm actually really good looking, guys. Okay, and I just want to clarify one thing. I'm just going to zoom out, right? just want to clarify that I'm actually not fat. This shirt just is unflattering. All right? I just want to be really clear about that. It's just the way that... Oh, shit. Oh, oh, I was holding it. Hold my breath in. Give me a moment. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, guys. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. I'm just trying to warn you guys because I've just been through a lot of shit. I've been liquidated, okay? I have lost... I lost $90,000 for those that remember. Like, I literally lost $90,000, I think, near the bear mark, near the bull market ending, like, somewhere... <laughs> somewhere in here it was legit somewhere in here between like 17,000 whatever 250 in there that's where I lost 90 fucking K I was in a really big position don't ask you guys can do the math <coughs> we're taking guess that was the biggest ever play in my life and um fuck man it happened like fast dude <laughs> I'm just laughing back on it now. And I took a break, if you guys remember. I took a break right after we hit, like, December 20th or something. Like, and I came back, like, for the new year. And then I came back for XRP. Right? And then I caught the XRP rally to $3.30 from a quarter. That was a pretty good one, right? Like, who the fuck catches a rally from a quarter to three thirty? Not me, but I'm saying, like, a client... I caught that, I played that entire structure. I know a lot of people did do that. It was pretty nice. I remember that day that people like just fucking shit themselves right before. This was like the final attempt. Okay. This was like literally the final attempt for the bulls to push up here. You're just stacking up with the bulls or the bear shorts. And you knew that this was fucking coming. And these 30 days were really suspenseful because we were in a range of like 6% for BTC for 30 days. And I remember this very well, this drop. Do you know why I remember it really well? Because this was in 20, 2018, and that's the year that I went to France, right? And this was the slowest month that I ever had. And I was living in this loft where I was just trading, right? And I wasn't really doing much in France at that, during that month. I was living in this loft and just trading. And it was so hard scalping. It was the worst month I ever had in trading. And like in my after like my career got a lot like more professional, you could say. Because I think I made like two grand that month. And it was just pulling teeth. Playing like literally $30,000 positions for like a 
0.75% scalp. And then, after that, I started, like, you know, doing my own shit and dating that chick or whatever near November. Um, near November, and that's ex uh, she actually got to France that fucking day, November the 14th. That's crazy. She got to France that day, right? And then the market completely dropped while I was on this fucking romantic honeymoon, not honeymoon, like romantic little vacation there in France with that chick was, that I flew over from Toronto. And then, coincidentally, exactly on the day we fucking get back to Winnipeg, right? Because she lives in Winnipeg as well as Toronto. And then we, we like, and then the bull market began. But we started the holiday festivities and shit. So I missed this entire fucking bull run pretty much. Like most of it, right? Like until I, until about Mar until April, that's when I kind of got my shit together. And then, yeah, because during this time I was in rehab. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys that are new might think I was joking, but it's a true story. I actually went to rehab. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I can laugh about it. I, I've had some wild stories, man. I'm like a lot more tame now. So, right now, on every single time frame that we're... I know that I'm, I'm not really doing a lot of tea today, you guys. I'm just kind of like rambling a little bit as well. Just talking about adding, lots of anecdotes today, right? So, like, I'm looking on, on the 8-hour. It's slightly... not actually, It's not even... There's like, who am I kidding? There's no bearishness whatsoever. All I can forewarn people is that we can see one of two things, Right? For parabolic moves upside, that's that's what I was going to talk about at the beginning of the video. What is we just see a massive same equivalent equal opposite reaction type thing? You know what I'm saying? Downside. So because it goes up so much, that we just end up seeing it bam tank to the downside. And I think that this is it actually. I legitimately think that we're gonna drop now, because we're breaking this channel. This channel is um pretty pretty massive in my opinion. This one was like a really bad bull trap up there. Something like that, right? Just kind of as best as we can do it for now. And I think that this is now the official drop coming to the downside. Like, that's what I've always believed that December 17 was the day for the drop. And I'm not going to change my hypothesis. Because I think that that right there, just to end it up being the official downtrend and i'll explain in detail why so if you go to like for example on a low time frame okay go to low time frame you see this channel and what you see is that it attempts to break to the upside but it fails back into the channel and now we come down right and then the 30 minutes shows it very evidently that this right here is trying to attempt uh, an entry into the bullish side again of that channel that has been established now for the past one day four hours and these are significant factors to acknowledge right so now i see the shift in the 30 minute rsi because this was hovering really high and what i want to forewarn everyone about is that what usually happens is we get very bullish on think of it like a like a wheel right where it alternates and it cascades so if you were bullish for example on the five minute chart and you start spiking high on the other side okay let's say everything is really low okay everything is like at 30 our side we'll just pretend for a moment that every time frame, the 5 minute, the 20 minute, the 30 minute, the 1 hour, 4 hour, 8 hour, 12 hour, weekly, is all at 30, okay? So let's just say now the price is at $10. It starts at, okay? Follow with me, okay? So all at 30, and now we're at $10 the price. So now if the price starts moving up a lot and fast, that means that the 1 minute chart will probably spike up first, right? And then you're probably going to need a few one minute bars that are spiking up to form for example a 15 minute um, um chart for the rsi to spike up is what i'm talking about right because you need a lot of one minute bars to eventually form for a five five minute bars to form for the rsi to spike up and then it goes the other way as well where you need a few five minute bars of the rsi to form for say an hour 
our side to start spiking up. And then if enough hours on the R side starts spiking up, right, where it goes upwards, say to like 70, then maybe the three hours will start going up as well. And then that starts to cascade. Think of it like a rope. Think of it like a rope where that's lying on the ground, and then you grab one end, and then you just flick it up quickly. And it makes like a, you it makes like a, a chain, right? It makes like a, you know, it makes like that loop thing. You know what I'm talking about? That loop. And it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going to the other end of the rope. Do you know what I'm talking about? Or like a long string where you put it on the ground and you just go, you flick it like that and it makes that, that, that upside down U thing and it goes to the other side because of the momentum. Think of that like the time frame, okay? Time frames start off at the one minute, which is where you start doing that, right? And then the further you go along that little rope, the higher of the time frames it is. So you want to start cascading all of the high time frames to a high RSI, which will cascade over, right, to bullishness. And now, unfortunately, the opposite applies as well to bearishness. That's what I'm going to get to. If you're really high on the RSI, and now I get to give you clear-cut examples, okay? So now, if you're at really high RSI, on all the time frames, right? Except for the low ones. Don't worry about the low ones, right? The, all of them. We're at eighty nine, super high, like eighty three ish. <clears throat> Excuse me. What if now the thirty minute time frame? It's also really high, but now we're talking about MACD. So now I just forced you guys to change up that mentality of talking about our side before a lot, right? Of it being really low. All of them being really low, and then the low time frames start cascading up to then spike up to the higher time frames. But now I'm forcing you guys to use that critical thinking skills that you have, that I know you have, to apply it to now on the high side, right? And also changing it from our side to Mac D. That's right, guys. I actually planned this video a little bit. How do you like that, huh? <laughs> okay, so now we're talking about the Mac D which hovers really high. And then we know that the weekly chart is also really high in the MACD and the RSI as well, right? So now what if we say to ourselves, what if the MACD is the one that broke it? Do you see this point right here? I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm going to guess that right after this vertical line that you see to the right, that's probably where shit just started to break down kind of. Oh, I'm right. Do you guys see what I just did? Okay, this one here is not really. Okay, that I don't like these moves. Let me let me show you guys. I got so many tricks up these sleeves, guys. So many tricks. Let me show you one. You guys like really should take my course, honestly. I'm not even talking about it. Like, it's 150 bucks. I'm not, no offense, but like, I'm not doing it for the money. Okay. I trade on a pretty decent sized account for my main where I kind of shadow the public account. That's kind of funny. That's actually really, really funny now, actually. My big account is shadowing the public account because I'm spending more time on it. <laughs> That's kind of cool. That's kind of oh, all my baby whales. Okay, what was I going to show you guys? Okay, the Mac D. Yeah, I'm just saying take my course, guys, man. You guys are going to really like it. I think I got like four slots left for the year. That's it. That's it. And then I'm going to do what I intended last year to do, if you guys remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that the thing about parabolic peaks on the histogram, I'm actually going to draw it for you guys. Actually, I'm not, I'm not going to draw it. It's going to be too complicated for me. Is this, okay? Parabolic peaks go like this. They go like that of the histogram. And then they come down. They, an example. And you get a higher one. And you get an even higher one. That's the fifth wave extension. And then if you take a, if you, if you think of how Elliot Wave is, right? This one is mediocre, right? 
So this is a histogram we're talking about. This one's all right. Doesn't retrace that much. This one gets a big one. Okay, this one gets a big one, right? And, and then it doesn't retrace that much either. And then this one gets even bigger because the histogram starts making more moves. So this one gets even bigger. Like, you know, like maybe maybe more more like that even, right? Stuff like that. And that's how parabolic moves work. According or in conjunction with the histogram. Fact. Example, let's find one. And exactly which one for you. Sometimes they're much harder to see than others. So we're looking for a parabolic move up. Here's waves, for example. Okay, We're going to go on the 12-hour chart. And what we're seeing are these peaks like here. Like here so, right? I'm, not, I'm only using Elliott Wave just to count them. But don't, don't think I'm using EWT on it. Just showing you guys the peaks, right? Where you see it start from all the way and even down over here. Where it starts to form the ones somewhere there. And then the three, that's the three for sure probably. Four and five. And the big correction comes and the next wave goes upwards. For example, on XRP, even on an eight-hour chart, we're seeing a series of three usually. One, right? One there, two, three. And then it correlates to parabolic moves upwards, right? Here's the first peak for the first wave. Here's the third peak for the third wave. Here's the third peak for the fifth wave. See how much they're correlating? Okay, now check this out, though. Like, I'm just being so hypothetical right now. I don't know. I know you guys don't like me being bearish in videos, but shit, man. I don't want to be trapped, do you? I don't want to be trapped at all. Now, now, here's my hypothesis. I argue everything with facts. Here's the, starting the first peaks. Here's starting the second peaks. I'm not kidding. Here's starting the second peaks. If there's a, the third peak, you know this shit's going to drop off of the planet. Right? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it could happen. At the 30 minute, it could just be the beginning because this does not look healthy at all. Anybody who says this looks healthy, no, it's not, guys. Right? Just because we see the 30 minute break and it all starts on the low time frames and then it cascades over to the high time frames. So if it happens on the 30 minute, don't discount for a moment what I've proven thus far that it could go to the high time frames and we are massively overextended that we know okay so I'm always heeding caution so I'm very short biased if you haven't noticed and this is actually what I specialize in for the people that have been following me for a long time they know this for the people that are new welcome I specialize in fucking calling tops man that's that's what I do when I called that top on Bitcoin Cash four years ago to the dollar, when it went up like a thousand something, fuck, that was like just pure fluke, I have to admit. But it was just mind blowing that I called twenty eight hundred dollars when it was at seven hundred and went to twenty seven ninety nine. That that was like an example of really extreme, just an example. But like you know, I like to identify tops because I want to know where it's starting to get really risky. And it's starting to feel like that, right? It's starting to feel like the overextension is real right now. And what I don't like at all is how this is forming now a support in a very bearish way. Do you see this? This is now... It's not like it's using it as a bounce. It's using it as like the 30-minute curved over already pushing it to the downside. It broke out of this channel already, which we see with certainty, right? You know what? Like, I don't know if I'm going to be making this video public, actually. Shit. How many people even view the videos? I'm going to check. Yeah, I think I'm going to make it public. Oh, don't mind. This is just a song that I'm learning for guitar. Accident. So, um, yeah, it, it looks like it's pushing to the downside, basically, aka, is it a possible descending type of triangle? So, I'm getting a lot of mixed signals right now. Like here, 
Do you see how the 15 minute chart on a low time frame? We're talking about a micro analysis here for most people. So welcome. We see that the momentum at 12.15, right? Today, it's now like two something. The momentum from 12.15 to about one o'clock. So for 45 minutes, the bulls push to the upside, which we see that. We see that. And then instead of having the momentum to uptick right there, we see that this one that leveled off here was the rejection. Which, which was like a tweezer kind of, right? Right there. The rejection to the upside. And because we see a rejection, we now see three ticks to the downside, right? We're seeing down ticking basically. So which implies that the momentum right now just got rejected going back into the support. So we're now at the 55 EMA for the 15 minute chart. And we're also like just in really dangerous territory, like above 90 RSI. And we it's also even scarier in my opinion because the two hour, for example, formed this, like now peer price action looking at it, okay? No more RSI MACD. Peer price action, this candle itself, I have to admit, to the morning, December the 17th, today, was fucking scary. Okay, I thought this was going to be the one candle that decided it on the two hour because I'm like in and out of sleep. That's how scary it was, right? It dropped. It caused a panic market-wide, worldwide. That's like billions of dollars is getting liquidated right there. But we ended up pushing to the upside. And now we see a clear resistance at $23,600 range. Okay, that's the clear, clear resistance. Right around there, where anything above it is a bear trapped, bull trapped possible region. So now the volume dwindles off in the previous candle, right? The hammer forms to try to give it a push. <coughs> Excuse me. But you see that it was actually rejected here. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. On the 30 minute here, we see the bearishly engulfing candle. We see the series of small dojis going up. Big bump up, doji, bearishly engulfing candle, right? Combined with a bear spinning top, doji, shooting evening star types candles. Bullish, bullish, doji, doji. All that work, all that pressure, every time we're getting wiped out, if you've noticed. One big candle, one big candle, one big candle. This one right there was kind of like the fuck you candle, I think, that kind of ended it for now. Which is causing all of these candles to have dojis at the top or evening star type shooting uh, candles, right? And the sell-off volume is starting to increase as well. On the four-hour chart, this bearishly spinning top shows itself two candles. Like uh, 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 two candles, one, two, after this huge bearishly spinning top with a bigger wick and a smaller body. So now we got four hours left, but this candle looks nasty. Doji candle right there. Sure, the 12 hour and the daily and everything high, it looks good. But what we're trying to catch is possibly a low time frame that's showing possible rejection to see if we can catch this momentum shift over. And if we can't do that, then we can expect a massive volatility where I explained how it just ends up crashing to the downside. So that's my take on Bitcoin today. What can we possibly hit? If we end up going to the upside, the answer is I have no idea and nobody does. If anybody says it's eyeing something, it's like they're just using extensions, which could be really, really, really off. Right now, though, what I see is lots of doubt, lots of uncertainty, lots of fear, lots of greed in the market. That has obviously got to be a one and that's a two. You know what? There's no way I'm starting Elliott Wave Theory with you guys for this. I'm saving that for the premium group. Sorry. So enjoy. I hope that this video, you've taken a lot away from it. If you saw this video and you're interested in my course, pick it up for 150 It might be one of the best things you invested in it because education in yourself is probably the most important thing. And like anything else where you want to learn. Unfortunately, there's tuition, right? But I think it's worthwhile. I like my course. It's only going to get better, if you know what I mean. So enjoy your day, everybody. I hope that you took a lot away from this course. A lot of effort was spent recording this 45-minute video that actually took about an hour and a half. So please do enjoy it. Please give me a thumbs up if you made it to the end of the video. Leave a positive comment. Subscribe. Click the notification. And if you guys are interested, sign up for the premium group. The premium group is awesome. 
I just took a small little break from it. But you know what, guys? I feel like making this video, I can't tell if I should make it for public or not. We'll see. Bye now.